Communication is so important throughout the relationship, but what about game time communication? So when we look at the pep talk and the huddle and the post game wrap up talk, um, how important are they? And what, what has been effective for you guys as players and for you guys as coaches? By the time game time rolled around, I was already ready, right? Wow. I don't, you to put me up. I, I know a lot of my teammates used to be in the, in the middle jumping up. I'm like I gotta, I gotta preserve my energy. I'm, I'm already motivated, right? Um, right? I treated practice, and I treated practice like the actual game. So when the game, you know, rolled around, I was, you know, mentally and physically, you know, ready to perform. Um, but I don't even necessarily know. I, I remember any pep talk from any of my coaches because I was mentally in, in that place. I was, I was one of those guys. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not staying up late. Um, I'm getting my sleep. Um, don't talk to me before the games because I got, you know, I got some nervous energy. I probably got my headphones in. Uh, but when it's time to play, you know what I mean, um, it's, it's not much to be said. Uh, I, I agree, Eugene. Um, as a player, if you are a good player anyways, like there's – the coach could do as many pep talks as you want to. You should be locked in automatically. So the night before – you're thinking and you're playing what's going to happen in the next day in your head. And then as soon as you go to the arena or as soon as you walk in the gym, you know, all right, it's game time. For me, it's the huddle. Like the huddle. Um, as a coach, you have to understand, like as coaches, we're telling our players, like you got to understand the situation. It's even That's even bigger for a coach because there's so many different moves during the game, whether you're up 20 or you're down 10 or whether you're down one or you're up one. Like as a coach, if you're down 20, now you're trying to, motivate your, your players to say, hey, we can still get back in the game. You know, I've seen coaches where they've been down 20 and they're coaching like they're not going to ever come back. You know, players since that, if I hear my coach saying, well, guys, just put up some shots and hopefully something happens. I feel like he's already – he's already we, we lost the game already because the coach has, has lost it. But if we're down 20 and my coach is still coaching like we're down one, I believe in that. You know, I'm like, you know what, we can do this. Hey, cut the lead to 10. Let's just get it to 10. Now you're setting goals. Now you're now you got players buying in. Um, so I think that huddle is so critical. Players are gonna be up anyway, some players, and the players is not, they're not even in the game. So uh, but the players who are locked in, they you can have a million pep talks, they're gonna be ready. But that huddle, because there's so many different, like I said, so many different moves in the game. Every time out. It's like a, you have to set a different goal for your players. All right, we're up five. Now let's try to get to 10. Let's try to get the score up. Like, look, on the defensive end, we're lacking. We got to step up our defense because this team is closing in and locking in. We got to close out on threes. We got to take charges. Like, you got to coach your team for each each situation. So that huddle to me is the most critical. Um, and the end of the game, the post-game talk, you know, the post-game talk is all about prepping your players for the next – for the next game, you know, um, a lot of our kids nowadays they're different than than how we used to be. Um, those post game talks, you know, we used to lock in on post game talks and and think, you know, I right, back to the drawing boards. Um, the millennials they're more emotional in post game talks. Like they take losses so hard, but they're also so high when they win, you know. So it's kind of like as a coach, the post game talk is just like, hey, fellas. Back to work on Monday. You got some things you got to clean up. Um, you don't want to spend too much time beating a dead horse on a post game talk, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, when it comes back to me, uh, you know, the post game talk is important. I still, I guess I'm old school too. I kind of feel like it's very important. I think it's important to address your players, each player. I think it's another, it's also an opportunity for the players. And, and, and there's different um, thoughts on that. Some people may think take a little time before you talk about certain things or, uh, 
even with the parents, when they come communicate with the coach, there's a thought process of, why don't you wait a day or two before you even talk to the coach? But I think at the post-game um, talk, when it comes to the coach, assistant coach, and the players, whether it be the players that's actually playing in that game, it could be players that's not even suited up that also I, I, I like to think that need to be involved in it. So I think it's needed. I think that it's an opportunity to form. It's an opportunity for some of the players to also express certain things too. Because sometimes they don't have that opportunity, especially now, and you get with the older players. They don't always have rights to get to where they have to get parents. They work and they, they, they work hard, but they don't always – they can't always commit to the same level as some parents can. So I think post-game does give an opportunity. Shoot, sometimes that's the only time you see certain parents, you know, and, and it's sometimes the first time certain parents see certain players that's on the team with your player. And I think that that's important to gather your players. I think it's important for that visual. I think that um, even for the players that's ready to go before the game, the huddle – I think it's important to bring the team together. I think it's important for the leaders to to show the leadership. I think they gotta hear it, feel it, and not just see it, they gotta embrace it. So I mean I think they're they're hugely important. And like you said, the millennial millennials, they're they're emotional. Uh, but that's that's where the coaching comes into play, where we gotta uh, actually discipline them to know that this is the, the same order of operations when maybe you'll go to a job interview and you learn some stuff from your coaches as far as speak up, maybe a coach say yes or no. So, you know, there's certain tangibles that we got to still implement and, and pass it on. Hopefully they still, you know, and that's just the way I came up, you know, as far as huddles and posting and pregame. One, one thing that you said that was powerful was um, also the players that didn't play that post game talk is definitely important for those players as well. Because um, us as coaches, sometimes we forget and this is real. Sometimes we forget about the kids that didn't play, you know. Um, sometimes it, it it can feel like the coach is only talking to the kids that were in the game. So uh, I definitely uh, respect that perspective on that for real. So if I asked you guys to come up with a definition, how would you just define positive discipline? And how does that make a difference in going forward in the season? Positive discipline. That's, that's a tough one. I've never used that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never put that in my bag. Um, <laughs> man, positive discipline. All the coaches I ever had, they never used positive discipline. <laughs> um, but to flip that around, positive discipline can be used. Um, sometimes it's taking more time if, if somebody's not uh, hitting a hole or something in football or knocking down free throws. Maybe it's, hey, we're going to shoot some free throws today. Okay. Or, hey, we're going to sell some cones and uh, you're going to run through some holes. You know, you're going to learn how to read your blocks. You know, maybe it's just taking a player out and instead of just getting on them, maybe it's just, Let's work on this some more. So maybe that's some good positive <laughs> discipline. Yeah, I think that I think those are true. Those are true. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to run my brain to, to find some more, but I think you know what they call punishment is, is necessary to get to an end. I mean, sometimes six inches is a necessary. Necessary. It's 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 a discipline that's positive, you know, and it's necessary. So it's it's. Not something you're necessarily going to just do just out of the, man, you got an arm roll, but, man, let me get some six inches. Like, not necessarily something that you just use for callous reasons, but I think there is great examples of it. Uh, something I touched on a little bit earlier, maybe making them write something, make them do something that they really don't like doing, but you know it's necessary. You got to, especially for student athletes that want to go to college and want to take on what you're really going to have to take on. Sometimes you got to give them some of that discipline. I, I think even uh, for me, being an author, right, being an author is, you know, one of the most difficult challenges, you know, that I, I took upon myself, right? And so I have to have, like, positive discipline, right? I'm trying to, um, you know, finish this novel by a certain day, but also make it relatable to, you know, these inner city children that I come across and even the ones that I don't have a chance to meet, right? And so positive discipline is, is about establishing behaviors that's going to allow me to reach the finish line. 
And so it's whether it's, um, all right, I, I'm going to get up at four o'clock in the morning and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lock my phone away and I'm going to stay focused for, for two hours. Or it's um, uh, not getting down on myself when I got writer's block. Um, it's, um, you know, um, man, it's a, it's a lot of different things, but whatever those behaviors mm -hmm. are that can um, help you get to the finish line, those are the things that you have to continue to, to push, right? And so that, that discipline starts mentally. It starts mentally, for me as an author, it starts mentally for a majority of the athletes. When we talk about a season, man, it's a, it's a roller coaster ride, right? It's, it's times where it's like, man, why am I doing this? I, I just want to give up. Um, or, you know, we're at the championship, we're the best team alive, and, and how do I not, you know, uh, get overconfident? And so it's those behaviors that is going to uh, keep you grounded um, each and every day until you reach whatever goal you have for yourself and for the team. I like that. I like that. So I have some questions that were sent in from different parents, players, viewers. Um, and so I, I wanted to part. pick your brains a little bit with some of these. So the first one comes from LJ. Dear Titans, I am a rising high school student. I play sports all year long, football, basketball, track. But what should I expect to be different in high school sports? More competition. Definitely more competition and definitely um, you got to tighten up your discipline to handle all of those sports because football season brings a different stress. Uh, basketball brings a different stress and track is a totally different stress. So you have to be able to handle your stressors and balance it with your academics. And you also have to find time to work on your craft because if you're not, you know, in the starting rotation or if you're trying to make the team, um, you also have to balance uh, your 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 will to uh, make the team and also, um, you know, your books. You know what I'm saying? You got to balance all of those. Not to deviate, but I just was thinking to myself because it's a good opportunity to ask you to. Um, what if – you have a coach that's kind of like, all right, let's say you play football. All right, basketball season kicks off a little bit shortly after football. You definitely could do both. But what if you got a coach that's um, making you feel like some reason or another you can't, you got to make a choice? Like, what's the best way of giving a little tip that, to help that athlete? Because I'm pretty sure going into high school with that type of agenda, that that's something that's going to be – in their minds like do i need to make a choice if i do what tangible pieces can help me decide that? i would ask uh eugene and uh coach Corey on that. i i think it's tough um especially when you're probably better at one sport than the other but if it's, it's if it's equal and you have um you have passion man if you have passion to play and compete right um I think the I think the athlete should let that be known to the coach, right? Um, I'm passionate about this, um, and even think of ways of how one sport trans, you know, transitions to the next. Um, you can you can use that as well. Uh, but the, the passion, um, you know, should be the first and foremost thing you'll want to tell the coach. Like I'm passionate about this. If this is what I want to do, um, and and nobody should be able to tell you that you can't. And can do do anything, and so you know, I will. I will probably start there. It's kind of like lifting weights, right? So when you lift weights, like you're bench pressing, right? The secondary muscle you're working is your shoulders, but you're working your chest. Um, I don't think any coach should tell a player like, "Hey, you shouldn't do this. You should only do that." You know, because every every sport helps another sport as. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. So even even playing football, you know, football season starts in the fall. Some of us were um, two sport athletes, three sport. Football is a great prep for the physicality of basketball, you know? And then if you're playing basketball, it's, it's a great help for you getting in shape to possibly play baseball or run track and also track. Well, baseball, we know baseball players, they don't, they don't do as, the, as much as, you know, other sports, but like for track, you know, it's, it's also that explosion, that speed, that endurance that helps you in every sport. 
you know. But like Coach Eugene said, it's about, you know, what you're passionate about. First of all, if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. You know what I'm saying? Um, I played more than one sport in high school, and I was only good at two. But, at, like, I was also, you know, just being around sports in general, it just – you just love that discipline that sports gives you. You know what I'm saying? I ran track. I sucked at it, you know. But at the same time, I just love being around other athletes, man, who are going through the same thing, who, you know, it was it was an escape. It was a getaway, you know. So some some kids who do more than one sport is bigger than, hey, this is my best sport. It's just that maybe that that's their escape from their reality, you know, or maybe they're saying, hey, you know, I might be good at football, but I need track to help me in this. I mean, a lot of football players run track. You know what I'm saying? So does the coach say, man, focus on football? Of course he could say that, you know? Of course he could say that. But at the same time, um, I don't feel like we should deter our players from doing other sports because it 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 helps you. You know, it doesn't hurt you. It only helps. Only helps. I don't agree with all that. I think I'm a big component of that. I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, I know you're a baseball player. My bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I definitely agree that there's different um, things you get from both. You know, you do one thing, you add to the next sport, and it's like, oh, my goodness, that's why you got three basketball players that play volleyball. You know, they're professionals kicking it off mm-hmm. and after they retire. You know, I know a few, and it's like, wow, okay, you really excel in that. You use a lot of stuff in basketball. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. So our next question comes from Kelly D. Dear Titans, my son has a hard time keeping up with his grades when his sport is not in season. I don't know if it's his own motivation or leniency of the teachers during his season, but I don't know what to do. How do I motivate him for schoolwork? Um, Carry it over. Because one, that player lacks discipline. Cause they, they, for real, they should really like, just because you shouldn't get good grades during the season, you should also get good grades after the season. Cause if you're trying to, you know, take your, your talents to the next level, GPA is important. Um, that's another thing as coaches, we have to be honest with our players about They're saying like, Hey, I kept my grades up during the basketball season. As a coach, you look, you see our coach, he's always check for that. How are you doing once the sport is over? Because mm-hmm. you have to maintain a certain, status if you want to go to the next level like your GPA has to be what over what 2.5 you know which really isn't that high but I mean if you can't stay above a 2.5 without the sport you know that just shows that as a person you like you like discipline you know somebody has to stand over your shoulder or something has to be in front of you um in order for you to do what you what you need to do so as a parent if those grades fall uh after their sport you should keep the same energy and say, well, next year you're going to sit out two weeks or three weeks of the season, you know, just so you keep that discipline that, you know, you don't let, you don't, you don't let your guard down at all. You always try to do your best, no matter who's looking over your shoulder, no matter what's going on, you always give it 110%. So um, you just need to apply the same discipline to them as if they were in sport. Like coach, he said, man, it's discipline. Um, You know, I'm, I'm scratching my head because, this this player, his his grades drop when he's not in season, right? When you're in season, you're at the busiest, and you mean your your, your grades are higher than when you have more free time. Like that's right. that's crazy, right? And so it, it does come back to discipline. It's something that um, with all this free time, you are either you know busy hanging out, trying to chase the girls, playing video games. You're doing something uh, with that extra time instead of hitting the books. And so you got to get back to the basics. Um, you can't, you can't have these extracurricular activities until you take care of business first. And, and that should be preached in the home, like take care of your business first. And then you can, you can have time to, to socialize and, and kind of relax your body. But, um, it's, it's a, it's a time management slash discipline issue. For sure. Definitely need to reprioritize a little bit, you know, that's kind of, I mean, I think we all know that if the school ain't right, we ain't got time to be dealing with the school grades ain't right, huh? I mean, the sports is one thing. When they start talking about grades and stuff in the school, the way they do more and stuff now, from my perspective, I just had the grades right. You know, if the grades ain't right all year, I like, I encourage, of course, right, we encourage all players to try to honor if we can. Because, I mean, coaches don't got time to deal 
what you need to be dealing with before you come over to us. Not to say that's not an aspect of it, but <laughs> and then like you said before, your grades are slipping during season, something's going on. Probably you, you've obviously got the um, ability. You just you lack the discipline, you lack the fortitude to, to try to continue it, you know, which is the tough part. It, it ain't hard to do it for a short amount of time. And you might be in a a semester where you're taking this class and this class and you think it's all a cakewalk because you timed it out during your season or whatever you're playing. But now that that's kind of off and slow enough and you got to start gauging yourself up, and that's, what's happening. that's, that's kind of disappointing, actually. But I think they definitely need to prioritize differently. I hear you guys throughout this conversation saying that on or off the court or field, discipline and consistency are really key to being yeah. successful. So I think that's definitely been a common theme through what we've been talking about. Um, our last question comes from Marcus A. What tips would you give someone who really wants to play at a collegiate and at a professional level? Sam, that's a good one. <laughs> that's the biggest thing about uh, a youth that do get to there, man, they get there. And they, they get right in a little bit of trouble. It could be the most pettiest things. It could be hanging out with your, your your friend and deciding to go to a store and do something stupid in the store. Or you could have a whole bunch of people in your dorm room. It's, it's so many things. It's like you don't want to sound like you just preaching or telling them something that's redundant, but <laughs> get on the books, relax, and try to stay focused. That's the only way you're going to make it. I mean, at the end of the day, the only way you're going to make it is if you focus your tail off, have some type of discipline, and, and get your job done. Um, playing at the collegiate level is a totally – and I tell a lot of kids this. When you jump from high school to college, it is a big leap. Um, when I left high school, you know, in high school, you can separate yourself from the boys and, and you consider yourself a man. When you go to college, everybody's a man. You know what I'm saying? The from the football from the first, the the best player to the fiftieth player on the team. I mean, pretty much every athlete is could play somewhere. You know, they could play somewhere. So it's kind of like if if you're looking to go to the collegiate level, let's talk on that level first. Where are you in high school? You got to see where you at. You got you got to take a real realistic assessment of where you are in high school because um. You know, the different levels of Division One, Division Two, Division Three, even D three schools, um, they still got some 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 great players that never got their chance. So you're just not gonna walk on a college campus and think that, you know, you're gonna automatically earn a spot. It's totally different in collegiate sports. Like it's some people that will blow your mind at how athletic they are, um, especially the physical aspect of it. Um and I tell a lot of kids that too, man, you, you really have to be physically ready to play uh, college sports, man. Like when you leave your senior year, you have to really like hit it hard because um, I think that's what was a culture shock for me. Um, being so um, you were dominant at some point in high school and you felt you feel invincible in high school. Like you feel like, yo, I'm the best. And then you go to college and it's like, dang, everybody's good. Like, for some kids, that's hard, you know? So um, you got to always be working on your craft. You got to know it. You got to be realistic where you're at. And if you're looking to play pro basketball, um, like I tell people, pro basketball, pro football, pro track, volleyball, um, it's their preparation, their level of preparation and focus, man. It's that like it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like um, I watched Michael Jordan at last dance. I always bring this up. I mean, Michael Jordan's level of focus and discipline was like on a totally different level than anybody, any athlete will probably ever know. Because, I mean, the man worked, he worked his butt off, you know, to be the greatest. I mean, he he used to make up stuff in his head to motivate himself to to kill people. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's actually people who are insane like that playing sports on the college level and the pro. So, it's just your preparation. You got to be realistic about where you are because, I mean, everything's not about – even if you're an athlete, it's, it's, it's not always about going to college and, and going to the pros, man. Like, sports can take you to so many different places other than the pros. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Division One athletes that don't make it to the pros, but because of who they are, it opens up other doors for them. So, 
um, just just take a real realistic assessment of where you are now and and, and just go from there. I think simply um, is make sure you're the hardest worker in the room um, uh, or even, even if you're not in the room, man, it's, um, it's like a hundred thousand student athletes. Right. Um, and whatever, you know, it, it may change whatever sport you play in, but everybody's coming for whatever spot. Right. Everybody. And just as soon as you start to let up and you thinking that you're this, you're that, right, is when somebody going to come steal your spot. Like me, man, I, my, my biggest regret is um, after my junior year, all conference, you know, they selling my jersey in the bookstores, got a, a billboard in Harrisonburg, right? And so I allow some some things to creep in and thinking, um, you know, I was, I, I, I've, I've arrived, I made it, right? Uh -huh. And it's the same thing that it took to get there, I didn't do after – I was on the mountaintop. And so guys were, were coming in, stealing carries. Um, you know what I mean? Um, and so you got to continue to have that hunger. You got to have that, like like they say, that, that mama mentality. Like, I, I just want to, to be the best every day. You can't take a day off. It's like your, um, your foot to the pedal every single day. It's, it's not just physical. It's, um, it's mental. It's how, you, how you're treating people. Um, the friendships that you make, the – you being a follower until you become a leader is, is so many different things, but whatever it is, you got to make sure you're doing it to the best of your ability and not think you, you, you're working hard when you're really not actually putting in the work. <laughs> right. That's it, man. That's it. <laughs> totally. It's to get you there. It's going to take to keep you there. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, you hit it on the nail, man. Like when you feel like you've arrived, that's the moment you fall. That yeah. is the moment you fall because you think you're on top. And it's like it's like a thousand, like you said, a hundred thousand other athletes who want where you are. And mm -hmm. that you being on top is fueling them to get where you are and replace you. So, I mean, man, that's huge. That's huge. That's that's so real. Well, I'd like to um, definitely I appreciate Eugene coming by and, and giving us some of your time out today. I definitely appreciate Coach C. I know you hard work. <laughs> Always. Allison out here just giving me all types of energy. Allison. But uh, definitely one day when we can revisit it, um, we're definitely setting up to make this a little bit stronger to get perspectives across because that's the whole point. And it, I got to tell people all the time, people who know me know that I'm being for real. This is about others trying to do what we can do. Cause, hey, that's how you make an impact and make a difference. And I definitely appreciate you, Eugene, stopping by. Um, Thank you. As always, you know, as always uh, I'll go ahead and I'm just going to be honest because this is true. And there's other ones. I just post on kind of show like how like this book right here is an easy, good read. Um, in fact, I got to ask you, you might not have an answer, but I'm not sure when junior and senior year coming out. But, um, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, man. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually going to start working on junior year in August. So um, hopefully sometime in, in 2021, I'll be ready to, to share it with everyone. Man, let me know how I can support you, Jan. Love to, um, to read what you got, man. I definitely would read it, brother. I appreciate it. Show us the support. Well, I definitely appreciate y'all. Um, and, and appreciate it. We'll, we'll get back at it. We'll get Thank you. Thank you. Bye,